Spear gorged, god mouth open and closed. Lust me from your palace of animal anger. Myth makers, alien powers, skeleton flowers, genocidal lucifers, silver seducers. Charioteers into the Armageddon, turning back towards the jelly of the darkness. Make way to abandon your skin carriage. The wind is blowing and nothing succeeded. Drumming is the band-aid for my broken soul. It, it is my progressive way of self-expression. The stories I hear in music speak to me more than words ever could. And having a voice in those stories and being able to interpret them through me does more wonders to my well-being than any other means of expression could do. right in the face, like uh, raw, but still very catchy and uh, very good music to dance on. The message of great pleasures for me is acceptance because nothing is permanent so like when you know that and when you, when you kind of make songs that are about death and destruction you just start to live in the moment and you ultimately you appreciate life more it's when you accept the fact that we're not gonna stay here forever. This album requires me to be in a couple of different musical personas. There's songs that are really electric and uh, and upbeat with a robotic anti groove. We want it to be danceable, but at the same time kind of uh, have really deep layers to it. Uh, and I wanted to also uh, kind of put that to the rhythms as well, so that you can kind of hear rhythms diff in different ways and kind of have layers in the rhythms. And, and a lot of my inspiration to that came from like crowd rock. Uh, which are simple rhythms, but you can kind of get lost into those rhythms. And that's just one thing you can get lost in the songs. The other is, also, of course, the harmonies and the kind of... Uh, where my style is to do kind of a lot of repetitive stuff. 
So that's definitely something you can get lost into. And also to kind of find joy from the void, from the acceptance that, all right, this is the situation. We are going to die at some point. Let's accept that and party. Yeah, so if you could describe this record, like if if you had someone had to, to you, you had to describe it to someone, how would you describe it? Mm. How does it sound? Crunchy and uh... I don't hear myself. I don't hear myself there. The lyrics for this record have been like exercising demons. It's been um, like a purging process and I think that on this record we really finally achieved some of the things we've always been trying to do with this band and uh, the songs that we, we always wanted to write um, from the very beginning and that's kind of the thing that's been spurring me on with, uh, with the continuation of this band is that it, it is a continuation of a, of a story uh, that started um, uh, quite some time ago and, you know the lineups have changed a little bit, but uh, I feel like with this this lineup and this chemistry, we've we're finally uh, getting towards where where was I I imagined this band could be, and um, the, you know the structures of the songs to come together as a band is it's very much a, a band record, um, and we we took our time over that with the lineup. We really tried to find the the, the best lineup that that we could the, that works together the best. And um, I think the experiences on this record, of recording here in this atmosphere, uh, in in the British countryside, at least for me, growing up as a uh, as a, a British kid um, with with that kind of music from the 80s, um, all the post-punk and stuff like that, I feel like somehow that's really infused into this record. And uh, the experience of being here uh, and being together with the band, I think, has has really come across into this record as well. It's it's very much. Uh, um, a soul journey, soul side journey, if, if you like. There are powers at work in this world. They conspire against you, they're out to take you down. I'm very glad it finally happened because I think we've been trying to work from from the beast milk demos actually. I think Matt was in touch with me about that. And it's uh it's been a really creative process from from the beginning and it's been just a joy to work with such a nice bunch of people and old friends very professional. I think we did a lot of stuff, of really good quality stuff in 16, 17 days. And um, I definitely personally feel that the album's better than everything, it, you know, the previous record in my opinion and the other band's record as well. So that was Eric Clapton's bass player, bass amp. Don't know how I ended up here. like a friend that's uh, ex cathedrals, well, that's cathedrals uh, base, um, uh, base cab. That's uh, Lee Dorian's Model T that I borrowed without permission for a couple of leads on the album. Sorry, Lee, if you see this. That's my 70s uh, Twin Rivers in really nice condition. We used a lot of that. We used it on a couple of songs. The Vox AC30. Um, we used a lot of that on Yuho's guitar, mainly. Um, the Fender I tend to use on the Sound City cab as well. Um, I like the Twins on, on 4x10s a lot. 
and then the jazz chorus we used quite a bit on on Alexis kind of effect guitars to get that kind of 80s chorusy kind of vibe um, it's been on a lot of my projects actually I really like the amp it's quite versatile and it sounds very different to all the 800s and 900s stuff oh shit and yeah we had uh, some nice Vintage KM84s, there was, there was another one here that we used as ambience mics for all of the guitars and all of the lead vocals, so there will be a lot of of my new room that isn't finished yet sound on the, on the album. So, quite excited to see how it pans out really, it's the first, first recording that's happened here, so... Um, Pretty exciting. Um, it's very exciting, yeah. Used to be an old code breaking hut, right? Yeah, it used to be a broadcast studio in the World War Two for the British military, part of the Bletchley Code, Bletchley Code Breakers. Uh, Bletchley is just over the hills over there. You probably can't see it because of the contrast. But, uh, yeah. So this probably this very building. They used to air fake propaganda to the Nazis from here and. I believe like part of uh, this building probably helped Britain to win the war against the Germans. So it's nice to it was like a it was turning into a storage barn for many years and I'm kinda of happy that it's gone back to some sort of recording or you know, location and I will keep it a secret location as much as I can because it's in the middle of nowhere and I don't want people to know where it is. So it's gonna be cool. Um, I hope that the, these songs would be the, the songs that, uh, that I always wanted to write with this band and uh, to really capture that essence of, um, of euphoria from, um, from our nihilism, you know, embracing our, our nihilism, our dark sides. I don't think there's enough bands around, enough music around anymore that really brings that out, that you can relate to because times are very dark, but also uh, you can enjoy, you know, you can listen to them on the dance floor or you can listen to them at home while you, you drown yourself in wine or you know you, you, you can listen to them through dark times and they'll bring you up um, so that that's been the kind of our modus operandi with this record is that, that it, it will also bring you up you know but it's 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 from the void but it's um, it, it's calling out from the void you know it's 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 an album that will um, hopefully uh, give you some sense of transcendence um, and that you you make something out of these dark times because you know, you have a couple of choices, really. Uh, you can survive um, and you can make the best of it, or you can just decide to accept your fate and die. And I think this music is much more rooted in the survivalism um, and uh, enjoying these dark times, you know. Yeah. 